Hello everyone, I'm Lin Yang from Tianjin University. Today I would like to present our paper, Semi-Supervised Log-Based Anomaly Detection via Probabilistic Label Estimation. Logs have always been an important part in software engineering. They serve as descriptions of system running status. Also, the log analysis approaches are equally important, as they can help diagnose the system problems. Researchers often use them together to create automatic and intelligent system monitoring algorithms, or to diagnose the reason of system failure. However, log analysis approaches are still facing some major challenges. First of all, the massive quantity of logs. For example, there are over 300 million lines of logs produced within an hour during an online shopping festival in China. And this massive quantity also makes manual labeling almost impossible, and the supervised deep learning models, such as LogRobust, are actually hard to execute. Last but not least, according to a recent study, log evolution is becoming more and more frequent. And this will cause a lot of false alarms, because history patterns will be outdated soon. In this work, we are aiming to find out a solution to solve those challenges. And please let me introduce our method, PRE log. This is an overview of how PRE log works. As you can see, there are three main stages corresponding to our main contributions in this work. First of all, logs are designed to be understood by people. So its semantic information could help us if we want to get rid of the log evolution problem. Here we use a semantic embedding approach inspired by those of natural language processing studies. And after that, we propose a density-based auto-labeling and a probabilistic label estimation approach to identify the normal logs and some possible anomalies. The label estimation here is to help reduce the impact of wrongly labeled data, which I will introduce more details after. This is the most important contribution we made in this work. To the best of our knowledge, PRE log is the first one to use unsupervised approach for auto-labeling and combine both unsupervised and supervised methods to detect the normalize. Finally, we use auto-label data to train a robust and efficient classifier for anomaly detection. Next, I will go deeper into the details of each of those three steps and show you how PRE log actually works. At the beginning, we follow a widely used approach to transform raw log message into continuous valued vector. First, we use join to normalize the log messages, which keeps the major part of log message, but remove the parameters such as IP address. After that, we use open source language model and the TFIDF algorithm to encode the nature language information into vectors. And after that, we use these vectors for auto-labeling. In this part, we apply HDB scan algorithm to gather similar log sequences. The reason why we choose HDB scan is that it does not require priori knowledge, such as the number of clusters, and it supports outlier detection. HDB scan is known as a density-based clustering algorithm. It uses the distance among vectors to collect the neighbors of them. Based on the clustering result, with the help of normal logs, we can easily label different clusters, and all nodes in that cluster will share the same label. However, this primitive usage of clustering method will produce so much noise that the machine learning models will be deeply infected. To meet this challenge, we propose a label estimation algorithm. The key idea is that the central vectors of each cluster are more reliable, but the marginal ones are not. So we modify the original 0 or 1 label based on the outlier score produced by HDB scan. Now the wrongly labeled nodes will have less effect. Now that we have the auto-labeled normal and anomalous log, we are able to train a log classifier to finish the anomaly detection job. In this process, we need to build a robust and efficient model to solve the challenge brought by log evolution and noises of auto-labeled data. So we choose the attention-based GRU network. Since log messages are time sequences, it is natural to use sequential models to encode the relationship within those sequences. 
GRU is a widely used sequential encoder and has been proved to be effective and efficient in several NLP tasks. Here we choose GRU to be the basic encoder for log sequences. Attention mechanism can be used as a pooling strategy, which learns the weight of dimensions in hidden states as well as those of different log events. Hopefully, it will assign lower weights to those that are irrelevant to the final judgment. And if new log appears, attention layer will weaken the impact of different parts of it and maintain the effectiveness of the model. Here we must highlight the estimated label obtained from previous auto-labeling are applied in the loss function. And its impact is easy to understand. Using estimated label will weaken the importance of wrongly labeled data and get the training process back on track. That's all about our proposed approach. In the next session, I will show you some of the experiments we did and prove the effectiveness of PRE log. First of all, we used two widely used log data, HDFS and BDR. We also used two real-world log data from an automotive company and our university. The purpose of using them is to verify the effectiveness of PRE log and if it is actually practical in real-world scenario. We split each one of these four data by chronological order to avoid information leak and simulate the log evolution scenario. In this slide, I will briefly introduce the experiments we did to prove the effectiveness of PRE log. If you would like to know more details about our experiments, you can find those in our paper. In this work, we compare the effectiveness of PRE log with five baseline methods. Deep log and log anomaly are typical semi-supervised methods. They both use subsequences to predict the next log in line when system runs normal. PCA and log clustering are two unsupervised approaches. They both use event count factors to cluster log sequences into different results. Log robust is a supervised approach which utilizes semantic embeddings. We put it here to see if semi-supervised methods can have a close performance to the supervised one. With regard to the effectiveness of PRE log, here are the results. As you can see from the chart, PRE log significantly outperforms the other state-of-the-art semi-supervised or unsupervised approaches on BDR log data. While on HDFS log data, the majority of existing approaches are performing well. The reason is, in the testing set of BGL, there are many new log events that did not appear in the training set, and other approaches cannot handle the log evolution scenario. On the other hand, here in this chart, you can see that log robust is slightly better than PRE log, but it is a supervised approach that requires manual labeling, which makes it less practical. To conclude, PRE log can effectively detect system anomalies, significantly outperforming the compared approaches with an average of 181.6% improvement in terms of F1 score. Meanwhile, the effectiveness of PRE log is close to that of supervised approach. Despite the evaluation results on open source benchmarks, we would like to see if PRE log actually works in real world scenario. Here are the experiment results we have on the real world log data. The results show that PRE log is capable of detecting real world anomalies and improves with an average of 157% in terms of F1 score. In conclusion, in this paper, we proposed a semi-supervised approach for log-based anomaly detection. We first used semantic embedding to solve the log evolution challenge, and then we proposed an automatic labeling approach to generate labeled data. And we use outlier scores to reduce the impact of noise. Finally, we use an attention-based GRU model to build a robust and efficient classifier. We conduct experiments both on open source benchmarks and real world log data to confirm the effectiveness of PRE log. We have prepared a demo of PRE log and it is now available on GitHub. If you have any further questions about PRE log or our research, please don't hesitate to email me. It would be my pleasure to answer your questions. So that's all for my presentation. Thank you all for your listening. Welcome everyone to the question and answer session of the paper semi-supervised log-based anomaly detection via probabilistic 
label estimation. My name is Silverio Martinez from the Technical University of uh, Catalonia. Uh, and I will be here together with uh, Lin Yang and Junji Chen from the College of Intelligence and Computer uh, in Tianjin University, who has uh, joined for this uh, question and answer session. So first of all, I would like uh, to thank the authors for the great video that uh, we have just seen. And I would like to ask uh, everyone in the room to please uh, make uh, questions in the chat and they will be glad to answer. Okay, so we wait uh, a bit of time for for question. We have the very first one uh, from Sina. Uh, great work. Did you also evaluate the performance of labeling for pre-lock? Uh, okay, thank you, Sina. Uh, that's a very good pro uh, that's a very good pro uh, question. Uh, actually, uh, the performance of auto labeling in PLE log is uh, somehow uh, similar to the effectiveness of the unsupervised approaches such as uh, log cluster and PCA. Uh, because uh, first of all, we use HDB scan and uh, semantic embeddings to auto label the log sequences. And uh, uh, secondly, we use some uh, no no normal logs to uh, help the auto labeling process. Um, this will cause a problem that uh, we can only uh, label the uh, not similar the, the log sequences that uh, are not similar to the normal ones as possible anomaly anomalies, but uh, we cannot uh, actually know the real tag for each log sequences. So the performance is uh, is really uh, really poor, you know, uh, very like very similar to the log cluster and PCA. Yeah. Thank you. We have uh, another question from uh, Leandro Minku. Could you talk a bit about what type of evolution happens to the logs over time? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's a very good, that, that is a very good question too. Uh, according to a previous research, the types of evolution uh, mainly includes the new log events, uh, which means that you, you read, read some new code to the system and there is some new log events in, in the code. And uh, also, there uh, there are some uh, changes, such like uh, such as uh, the changes of the, some words, and uh, add add some other parameters in the system to um, to to like uh, describe more details about the system about the system running status. You know, so um, I believe that there are mainly two types of uh, evolution. Uh, like I said. Uh, uh, addition and uh, modification, yeah. Oh, also there are some uh, reduction, but uh, actually it's um, not very uh, obvious. Okay, great. Then we also have uh, a few questions from Tim Menzies. The first one, <laughs> uh, he says, uh, one issue I have had with anomaly research is how to find a training set with three award anomalies since we have no model of free anomalies. Any uh, thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, first of all, thank you, Tim, for this question. And um, a really important thing is that uh, we, uh, yes, we can label some uh, real world log anomalies, but um, it is very uh, difficult, you know. Mm, first of all, the, uh, the scale or, or the, like the size of the software system is getting uh, larger and larger, and uh, uh, system operators, uh, which which uh, is responsible for the re uh, stability of the system running, is um, actually lack of some uh, domain knowledge, such as how the system is is designed and uh, how they are actually function, and uh, uh, with the lack of the uh, domain knowledge, it is very difficult for them to label real anomalies since they uh, actually cannot know what what is what is wrong with the, the, the system. They can only know that, oh, the system is down. But uh, when they have to dig dig into the real uh, real problem, they uh, they will find it very difficult. Yeah. 
So uh, that is uh, one uh, claim we made in this in this work. So that uh, we propose uh, an auto labeling uh, problem uh, approach to solve this problem. Yeah. Great. And a follow up questions uh, also from Tim. Any other kinds of anomaly prone data that this could be applied to? Oh, uh, sorry. Which one? Oh, another kind of anomaly prone data that is. Oh, exactly. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, PRE log is designed to. Uh, it's designed for some log based sequential data. So, uh, in this work, we use semantic embeddings and uh, some sequential encoders for the log based anomaly detection. But uh, uh, actually, it can be applied, but uh, we'll need some modifications, such as uh, if we use some data that do not have semantic embedding, we will have to find out another way to to uh, like to trans transform them into some some kind of embedding and feed them into a sequential uh, encoder. So any sequentialized uh, problem, oh uh, no, no, so sorry, not sequential. Uh, any data that with some uh, sequential features that uh, um, we need to uh, analyze is uh, uh, we can use PRU log to analyze it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, this question the other way around. So from Pinja uh, He says uh, nice work. Any kinds of anomalies that are difficult for pre-log to detect. Uh, for instance, any real world anomalies possibly in other data sets? Oh, uh, yeah, that, that is a very good question. Uh, you know, uh, in, uh, PRU log, uh, in our experiment, we found some uh, uh, some types of anomalies that is very difficult for not only PRU log, but also other compared approaches to detect, such as um, there will be some uh, misord. Uh, misorder mistakes, you know, some uh, in the, it is most likely to see in the parallel system, uh, parallel functions that uh, the execution order is not what they should be. Uh, so the order of the log, log events will be miss, uh, will be miss, uh, will be uh, different from the normal, sorry, it will be different from the normal one. Uh, so I would like to call it a mis misorder uh, anomalies. Yeah, that, that, that kind of normalize is difficult for, I'd like to say, all, all of our compared approaches, including PRU log, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. So one comment from Tim Messis. Uh, I get that operators need uh, support, but how do you find ground truth for anomalies? Yeah, that, uh, so uh, in our experiment, we have the labeled uh, data for experiments, but uh, Actually, in, in real world analysis, the ground truth is also very difficult. Uh, we can only say that uh, with the given label of the benchmarks or data sets we use, we can achieve a, a, a very a relative, a relative good performance in uh, of PRE log. But um, it's practical usage, just like uh, we uh, I have proposed, uh, I have presented in the slides uh, is. Uh, is a very uh, it's a, it is a very important thing, but uh, uh, we need to do more research on the uh, ground truth of a normalized in real world scenario. Yeah. Okay, so we have uh, less than than one minute. We have uh, a few more questions that uh, we can discuss uh, in the separate uh, discussion room. Uh, so for now, uh, let me thank again the the authors for the for this uh, question and answer session also to the very active uh, uh, questions that we receive from the from the audience and see you in the in the next talk okay Bye. see you guys thank you very much hmm. <laughs>